Fossil fuel is produced from anaerobic decomposition of dead organisms, which is a process that takes time over millions of years. This is the reason why fossil fuel is regarded as non-renewable source of fuel, as the rate at which we are using it, it is much faster than its formation. This means at the current rate of consumption, fossil fuel will eventually run out. The main advantage of fossil fuel is that it is energy efficient and relatively cheap and affordable compared to alternatives. The use of fossil fuel is associated with numerous negative environmental and social implications. The emission of greenhouse gases contributes to global warming, increasing emission of carbon dioxide from combustion of fossil fuel, results in acidification of water bodies such as oceans because carbon dioxide dissolves and reacts with water to form carbonic acid. Combustion of fossil fuel also produces particulates that are damaging for lungs and thus can lead to many lung diseases. An alternative to fossil fuel is biofuel. Biofuel is fuel produced from biomass. Biomass refers to materials produced from living organisms such as plants and animals. Two main examples of biofuel that are becoming increasingly common are bioethanol and biodiesel, both of which will be the topic of discussion of this video. In another video, we have discussed various ways ethanol can be produced. These include hydration of alkenes, substitution of halogenated alkanes, and fermentation of glucose. In this video, we'll be focusing on fermentation, as fermentation of glucose, which is an example of biomass, produces bioethanol and carbon dioxide as the byproduct. Biodiesel is produced from vegetable or animal oil via base catalyzed ester hydrolysis reaction using an alcohol such as ethanol as the other reactant. We will discuss this type of reaction in the ester video. The important point to make here is that no matter what reaction, Biodiesel, like all other biofuels, is produced from biomass. Since biofuel is produced from biomass, which can be regrown much more quickly than fossil fuel, it is considered as a renewable fuel source. This also means it is sustainable. Bioethanol and biodiesel are also biodegradable. So in the case of any spills, there are fewer environmental implications as they can be degraded and converted to other compounds by living organisms. Another phrase you'll hear being thrown around is carbon neutral. This is referring to the fact that combustion of biofuel still produces greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, but since the production of biofuel requires growing more plants to increase the abundance of biomass, the emitted carbon dioxide can be reused in photosynthesis to produce even more glucose. In a way, the use of biofuel does not produce additional amounts of carbon dioxide, therefore it is described as carbon neutral. Combustion of biofuel also produces less particulates compared to fossil fuel. This means there are fewer health implications such as lung diseases. You may have also noticed that bioethanol and biodiesel contain oxygen in the molecule. Partial oxidation of biofuel means less oxygen is needed for complete combustion. For example, if we compare biodiesel with diesel, diesel requires 27.5 oxygen moles for every 1 mole of diesel for combustion, whereas 1 mole of biodiesel only requires 20.5 moles of oxygen gas. This means combustion of biodiesel is less likely to produce soot and carbon monoxide, which are toxic products of incomplete combustion. In terms of practicality, biofuels are generally regarded as inferior to fossil fuels. This is because they are less energy efficient. For example, ethanol has a much smaller molar enthalpy change than octane. For every one mole of octane, 5,460 kilojoules of energy is produced, compared to only 1,370 kilojoules of energy for every one mole of ethanol combusted. If we compare biodiesel and diesel, the difference is much smaller but remains significant. 42 kilojoules per gram of biodiesel compared to 45 kilojoules per gram of diesel. It is also worth noting that most combustion engines are not compatible with 100% biofuel. Most vehicles use biofuel in the form of a mixture with fossil fuel. 
The most common example you may be aware of is E10 fuel, which is 10% ethanol mixed with 90% petrol by volume. E100 options, that is 100% ethanol, are only available in few countries in the world, for example Brazil. Although the production of biofuel is renewable, it has many disadvantages compared to fossil fuels. Fermentation of glucose to produce bioethanol is a very slow process, as a relatively low temperature is required to keep the yeast enzyme alive. Thus, this production process cannot use a high temperature to increase the reaction rate. This means producing bioethanol via fermentation takes time and leads to greater cost. After fermentation, ethanol needs to be separated from the mixture using distillation. This process requires a significant amount of energy, and this energy is usually supplied using fossil fuel. If you think about this, the use of fossil fuel during the production of biofuel really defeats the purpose of using a carbon neutral fuel source. Since biofuel is produced from biomass, a large amount of land is also required to grow the crops. If crops are used as sources of fuel rather than food, this also increases the price of food, which is another social implication. In addition to land, a large number of fertilizers is required to grow the crops. The use of fertilizers leads to soil erosion, land and water pollution. Therefore, using biofuel is actually indirectly associated with negative environmental implications.